just to start the ball rolling on actually getting to the slides, Galileo was one of these brave people that said, you know, I know everybody thinks it's like this, but I think it's like this. We lived on a flat planet for a really long time. We were on a flat planet, we were floating through space. You better not go too far off on your ships or else you're gonna fall off the edge of the earth and the monsters are gonna eat you and this kind of thing. And that was very much the standard model of physics at the time. Standard model of physics is basically the agreed upon model for the known universe that scientists around the planet have a base level of understanding, they put that into textbooks, and then they teach physics students around the world the basis of the foundation of the physics of what we think is going on. Because that's the big question. What is going on around here? How did we even get here? How did the universe start? Where is it going? Has it always been here? You know, that kind of major questions. Galileo dared to say, you know what, I don't think the Vatican is right with this story that they're telling you that we're in the center of the universe, everything revolves around us, it goes God, humans, animals, plants, plankton, I don't know, minerals, there's some sort of hierarchy, we're as close to God as you can get, unless you're the Pope, the Pope might be a little closer to God, so you might want to listen to the Pope, that was pretty much the deal for most of Western society. Now when we're talking about this, I'm not talking about the pygmies in the jungles of Africa and South America. They had a pretty good understanding of what was going on in a different way. I'm talking about white male Western thought coming out of Europe. The guys that started universities in England came and colonized places and said, oh, you gotta listen to this guy over here. We're gonna change you guys from being tribal to listening to Jesus and this kind of stuff. I'm talking about more like the evolution of what brought us to be here. We're mostly white people here living United States of America. It's the tradition that brought us to here that has been telling this story. And then Galileo almost got burnt at the stake for daring to say, actually, I think it's different. I think the Earth is not the center of the universe, that the Earth is going around the sun. It's more of a heliocentric model. And then somebody else like Einstein comes along and says, yeah, I know you guys talk about space, you talk about time. No, 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 no. It's actually all one thing. It's called space time. There should be a dash in there. And again, people are like, Dude, what are you talking about? This doesn't even make any sense to me whatsoever. I don't know, I don't even know. Einstein did not do very well in school. He wasn't accepted by his peers. He got a gig as a patent clerk compared to his own. And now he's Time Magazine's person of the century. Forget about the person of the year. He's the person of the last hundred years. The guy who started out saying some crazy stuff, like, what, space and time are one thing? That'd be like saying that the Earth is a sphere. You know, even though I'm standing here on the horizon and the horizon is flat, I've got scientific observations to back up my hypothesis that the Earth is flat. I say this because then Nassim Harmay comes along and says, I think we're totally wrong about the dimensions. I don't think dark matter exists. I think that we should be paying most of our attention to space and not to things like light, heat, sound, x-rays, you know, all these frequencies of the electromagnetic spectrum. We've been collecting all this data to make our unified field theory that describes the entire universe, but it's based on a very small fraction of what's actually going on. And it's great that people like myself and Jordan, young people that are not formally trained scientists, are starting to see this, assimilate it, and come up with our own realizations and then put it back out into the world. So I was very impressed when I saw you know, Jordan able to, like myself, take a large body of information and be like, well, I'm a layperson, and I want to explain this to the layperson, so I'm gonna go out and do talks, or I'm gonna make these little animated movies. Jordan has a history of uh, making you know, video games, right? Didn't you do video game animation and I, I, stuff I, like this? I've kind of spent the last 10 years of my life um, studying animation, 2D animation. And I really love just doing 2D art and stuff. And then make, I made like cartoons and I tried to do this big kind of animated series called Exile, which is about like, this, you know, this, this whole kind of epic, kind of like Star Wars in the future with this and that and stuff. And then, and uh, yeah, I, I did video games for a little while as well. And I still really like doing that. I want to do like a spirit science video game, but that's a little, that's once, once I connect with a a group or a team that I can work with to do that. So, but but yeah, I mean, it's it's really just what were you saying? <laughs> that, that now that Jordan, like you know myself, we're we're able to try to like try to make sense of some of the new information that's coming out that's different than the textbook information that we might have gotten in high school. Oh yeah, no, that information. Put it back terrible. out. Yeah, it, there was unfortunately a lot of stuff that we were told when we were kids. It's turning out to be totally incorrect. Like you know, very there's, incorrect. There's there's other stuff too that they, they they have the basic idea, but they have no idea how to relate it to anything else. Like I remember, uh, like trigonometry and like the kind of the, the, the mathematics of like sine waves and how that works. And I remember it. You know, they're teaching it. It's just like this thing, and you're, I'm like, how am I going to use this in my life? But then you start to go, wait a second. You take two sine waves and you put them apart, and they're spinning. And now you have DNA. Oh my god! And then. 
you know, you start to realize that this basic fundamental pattern of a sine wave is actually a three sta a three stranded kind of ge geometry that how the whole universe kind of works through. And it's just a matter of like taking that information and then relating it back to something that's actually meaningful rather than something that's not. I mean, I guess that's the biggest problem with things in school and stuff. It's like they're teaching things that have no meaning. And if you teach something from meaning, then suddenly, I mean, it's meaningful. You can do something with it. You can take it into yourself and make it into something that is something that's real rather than something that's just this kind of this thing that you don't know what to do with. Right? So it's an important thing, not just for us to sit here and talk and you guys to listen, but to also, you know, have your own internal process. And I would very much hope and encourage all of you to go out and try to explain this stuff, whatever your own experience is, to people that have no idea. Like, have you ever heard of sacred geometry? And people are like, what do you mean? Sacred geometry, Ooh, you know, like those type of people <laughs> that are like, oh, you're one of those new age blah, 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 blah people, right. you know? And, and, and be like, well, no. You know, there's actually a scientific basis for some of this stuff. It's not just esoteric, like, take my word for it and meditate and pray and we're going to, like, ascend. It's like, you no, know, there's actually a reason why people got to that point. There's a place that that came from. And um, you can really help people to, you know, undo some of these falsehoods that were basically perpetrated on us, I feel like, um, including things as basic as, oh, you were born with your genes. And so if you have cancer history in your family, you're probably predisposed to get cancer because, you know, once you're born, that's your genetics and there it is. Now we know that that's not correct. You know, Bruce Lipton, for example, biology of belief. We now know that you can actually change your genetic structure. You can change what your genes are doing with your thoughts, with your mind, right? Descartes, remember that guy? Your mind and your body right. are separate things. Right. Woo! That was probably the biggest travesty in the history of science because now we know, thanks to physics and everything else, that there is no separation. There's no such thing as anything being separate from anything else. That's an illusion. And so once you understand that, then you can start really tapping in and changing yourself down to the biological level, like literally healing yourself, literally healing other people, literally changing your genetic structure. So if you, if you doubt this, go look into epigenetics. Look into the biology of belief of Dr. Bruce Lipton. One of the many, many things that we were told when we were kids that is not correct. And there's going to be a whole long list of those things. I, I, I really like what you're speaking to there with, you know, healing yourself and healing others and how to do that. And I'd actually like to speak just a little bit about that because I've kind of found um, on my on my journey and my, my you know, life in the last year especially that um, the way to do that, you know, the way to facilitate a healing process, the way to facilitate a, tran a personal transformation is really all found within the connections that we make between each other. And I know I was kind of speaking on that a little bit earlier, but you know, we can really take this to another level. You know, a lot of people, um, I, I, I've adopted a new term now, and you, you know, the, as you said, the new age, airy fairy, foo foo la la, there, yeah. is, there is a realm of people who just like to say things like, Oh, from the mystical consciousness of the beyond and the connections with the divine grace and the holy trinity because all is one and therefore it is it's just saying things right there's no i'm not actually saying anything real i'm just saying things it's just words so in, in the new age circus is what i like to call it there's there's kind of this realm of people who say you know you have to do everything yourself everything is all within you and it's all on your own and you're all by yourself and you just have to heal yourself and be fine and i was really questioning that because I found in, in reflection and realization, and, and I actually shared a, uh, several months with someone who was just incredibly profound and actually kind of facilitated with this within me, is that that really wasn't the case. Um, all of the transformation and all of the healing and all of the experiences that I really um, experienced were made with people, with other people, with all of the people that I connected with, with the people that I met, the people that I talked to. And it was in the exchanges with these people that I would realize things about myself. And this actually just, there was something that happened like a week ago that was really cool that I was asking myself, you know, how do I define who I am? How, how, do, how do I know who I am? How do I tell, you know, what am I, right? And the answer that kind of came back to me was that I find out who I am in the reflections of others. And be perfectly spaced on, no gaps. And where those spheres overlap, you get that little try on ray, that's our vices kind of thing. And this is a waveform, it's not a static thing. It's like where two interference patterns of two different waves come together 
it's going like this. So it's it's more like a three-dimensional waveform that starts with a point and has three prongs like this and goes like this. That would be, uh, you know, a very foundational. And Michael has been emailing me really? all of his, his uh, images oh, he shows tons of pictures. for a yeah, long yeah. time. Every time he comes up with a new video or a new image, he sends it to me because he knows that I'm in direct contact with the sim. And I've talked to Ms. Sim about this, but I feel like, you know, Ms. Sim doesn't have the complete picture. He's got a big chunk of the picture, but no human on the planet has the whole picture. And so there's also people like uh, Dan Winter who work with vortex-based vortex math and phi ratio and talk in the golden mean. And I think there's a piece there that needs to be put in. And Marco Rodin also does a lot of vortex-based stuff. And I talked to somebody who's like his assistant and worked with him for a long time just last week in Ashland or a couple weeks ago. And so all these things, all these pieces are starting to come together. But the Tryon Ray, I think it's going to turn out to be a very foundational. Yeah, that's, that'll be one of, the, one of the next Spirit Science videos. I'm, I mean, I'm planning on a bunch of different things, but I'm going to do a video with the Tryon cool. Very specifically. Yeah. And at some point, I'm really excited about this. We've talked about doing this, but imagine Patchman, his little character, talking, and then I'm animated. You know, a little <laughs> cartoon character with the, with the beard. Jamie really wants to be a cartoon thing. I'm like, hi, I'm Jamie Jenover. And he's like, hi, I'm Patchman. And I'm like, have you ever heard of Mr. Marmy? And I go, da da da, take some more dead fingers here. And I saw him like, do you speed up your voice by 20%? And he's like, yeah. And really, she was like 10 or 12. Oh, 10 or 12. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, details. Really. Yeah, I was like, man, he's talking really fast. I bet his voice is a little lower, and he just went like that in the computer. And sure enough, and that's the way I like it. You know, I if, if I go to a lecture and somebody's like, hi, today we're going to talk about. Can you imagine if I start talking at that pace? You guys would be like, oh. And so for you to talk that quickly, I was just like, yeah, 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 it to me as fast as you can. They have those automatic readers that read bills in Congress because you have to technically read the bill. Okay, read the bill, they press this thing, and then it goes, oh, you read the bill, and it talks like, and I heard it on NPR for a second, and I was like, wow, you can talk really fast and you can still understand it. It's like watching an MTV music video, you know, boom, 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 every 0. 0.2 seconds a new image comes. Your brain is like, yup, mm -hmm, uh-huh, yeah, yeah. You can just, so it's good, I think, yeah, to, like downloading a program. Yeah, to right? quickly, so speaking of quickly, um, I have 250 slides. There's no way we're going to make it through all this material. Let me just do the super, yeah, pretty much. So let's do the, like, super quick, remember this whole story with the dimensions, right? right? right. And we live in the third dimension. And the 0D is a point, and the 1D is a line, and the 2D is a flat plane. We've never observed a 0D object. An infinitely small point in space that doesn't exist, that's what they'll tell you in geometry class. Put a bunch of these points together, you make a line that doesn't exist also, we've never observed that. Isn't that a singularity? Flat, yeah, singularity. Is the 0D. Is the zero, zero D. But we're taught when we're in school, geometry, that this is an imaginary dimension. Right, what does that mean? Exactly. That's a big problem if you're coming up with a standard model in physics that's based on observing reality and coming up with data. The entire foundation of the standard model of physics starts with something that doesn't exist. So, no wonder string theorists are pulling their hair out right now because they're trying to narrow down something infinite to something finite. They're trying to rectify this problem of the math for the big is different than the math for the small. <laughs> but it's, I mean, they, they, there's a lot of validity to what they're talking about. It's just that they, it's like, you know, it's just random. It's chaotic and it just goes like this all the time. And there's no form or anything like that. And we're like, well, what about geometry? Like, no, 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 no. It's, well, it's like this. For me, it gets worse than that <laughs> in the sense that they're like, they're like, oh, no, 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 no. There's not three dimensions. There's actually seven dimensions. You're like, really? What? How do those work? Is that an orientation in space? Oh, whoops, sorry. No, there's 11 dimensions. And then they're like, actually, there's 288 dimensions. And then you're just like, okay, give me a break. What's 277 versus the 278th dimension? How are those different? How do you even visualize this? It's just math. I mean, it's not based on actual observations of stuff at all. So Nassim, at age nine, looks at this and it goes, wait a minute, mathematically, you're taking this something that doesn't exist, making something else that doesn't exist, Making it something else that doesn't exist, which, by the way, when you ask a mathematician how flat are two-dimensional planes, their answer is infinitely thin. 
I will give you an infinite number of infinitely thin things. You're not going to put them together and get reality out of it. Yet, mathematically, that's what you do. You take six non-existent infinitely thin things and you place them like this. Oh, now we've enclosed space. Now we have width, depth, height, mass, volume. That does exist. That's the third dimension. That's where we are right now. But mathematically, what you've described is non-existence to the fourth. Well, you know what's really magic about it? That's not. Is that when you look at the, the, the zero D, the, 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 I mean, as represented by a dot or a sphere, within that sphere is all of the possibilities of geometry for exactly. every other dimension. That's why in a sim thinks it's completely backwards. Third dimension doesn't exist, second dimension doesn't exist, first dimension doesn't exist. The only dimension that does exist is what we call the zero D, which is actually a dot or a sphere or a point or a singularity. And when you say the word singularity to somebody, that is a very specific meaning in physics. It's not just a dot, it's actually the center point of what's known as a black hole. And so once you start talking about black holes, you might have to review, do you know what a black hole is? And they'll be like, yeah, it's that black tunnel in the sky that sucks in stars. It's got such a high gravitational field that sucks everything in there, including the electromagnetic spectrum. Light can't even escape. And so I always visualize this black funnel that went to a point called the singularity. And then once you go in there, then you disappear into another dimension. We don't know what happens to you after you go inside the event horizon of the black hole. The event horizon is that sphere beyond which if you cross, you have no choice but to go into the black hole. But now in the sim, get this, he redefines what a dimension is. He redefines what a black hole is. If you're going into Stanford University and trying to get tenure as a physics professor and you pull the rug out on the standard model of physics in your first slide of your presentation, it might not go over so well. And so that has been somewhat the story that Nassim has been up against. He's really pulling the rug out on some stuff that's considered absolutely foundational to the standard model of physics, which is we live in the third dimension, and this is how you get there. The Sim's like, I don't think so. And he actually said, I don't think so when he was age nine. And he's been working on this since then. And so now what he does is he goes in and he looks at the universe in an eye. The, the sphere really holds the possibility of an infinite amount of information. That you can get an infinite amount of information inside of any finite boundary. And that the universe is probably an infinite thing that's just chopped up into smaller and smaller things infinitely to infinitely small. That it's one infinite scalar fractal geometry. And if you look at it like that, then you start to see how everything overlaps, everything's interconnected, everything's nested. It's kind of like uh, infinite Russian dolls. You know? Oh, right, with the inside right. each other? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so that's really what the universe is doing. And each one of those dolls for the sim is actually a black hole, which should confuse you all looking at me like, what do you mean everything's a black hole? Because a black hole is that thing in the sky. But this is the thing. The sim redefines a black hole. Black slash white hole spelled W-H-O-L-E. Ta -da! Ta -da. Because everything is actually inside there, and what a black hole looks like depends on where you are in relation to the event horizon. If you're on the inside of the event horizon, it might look black, like when you go out at night and look at the sky and it's black, even though there's trillions of galaxies with trillions of stars. Why is it black? Because we live inside of a black hole right now. Light cannot escape our universe. Our universe is one sphere, and the Sims prediction is the latest paper shows that our universe is probably one dot interconnected with a bunch of other dots. In other words, other universes, multiverses, and that there's a very, 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 very large number of them, perhaps an infinite number. And our universe is a tiny, tiny, tiny little thing, like a quark in a bigger universe. So our expansion of our awareness went from, ooh, act, uh, act locally, think globally. Ooh, we're thinking globally now, right? Whoa. <laughs> Is that my fault? Oh. The things on top? No, the vents are fault. I've never seen that actually. Vent venting this thing somehow. Yeah, I've never seen it get that hot. Maybe. It's getting hot here. <laughs>